Tonight we have men's basketball, swim and dive, and a new segment from Ball State University. I'm your host, AJ Nyhart, with my analysts, Grant Godwin and Carter Brimer, and this is Cardinal Sports Live Plus. Thank you for joining us. Let's get things started with some Ben's basketball. The boys played Wednesday against Detroit Mercy, a tough battle between between these guys, with a final score of 68 to 65. So break it down for me, guys. How what happened in that game? That was a close one. Um, when we look at that game, that's not really one you want to look back on or just go back and watch too much because. We didn't have the lead. Our first lead we took with 135 left to play. So we were down basically the whole game, and it was just not a great game to look at or watch because it was scary. And Detroit Mercy, 0-9 on the year. You want to win by more than three points mm -hmm. and kind of dominate that game, but obviously that didn't happen at all. Um, it was kind of scary, but we ended up taking the win, so I guess that was good, but yeah. Hey, a W is a W no matter how you get it. I mean – I mean, I'm happy that Ball State won. I mean, I know we didn't play a, a, a complete game in the entire game, but we did mm. step it up in the fourth quarter, which matters the most. Second and you half. know what they say, defenses win championships. That's true. And, you know, the way Ball State's been looking, I know we had, didn't have a very impressive win against Detroit, uh, you know, that Detroit College, but at the same time, we have to look at this. We can't be overconfident. We can't be too low. We gotta be. We gotta have confidence. You know, we played together as a, well as a team. Jahil uh, Basher had scored 26 points which was really big for Ball State. I think him having a good game, and then that uh, Jared Wal uh, Basher guy had a really good game, too. After the last game he had at home, he didn't have a really good game. So, I mean, he really stepped up. So this is really, like, a lot of I – I look at this as a positive impact, not like a negative thing. I know we almost lost, but you got to look at the positive side between what Ball State did for the, and against Detroit. And I like that because, obviously, when you're down the whole game, it's easy to kind of just hang your head and be like, all right, we lost, like, game's over. But we fought through the adversity. We came out with the win. So I guess that is something you can take away from those games. Is we came out with diversity. We're now 7-2, and two, which is a great start to the season. Obviously, we haven't played the best people. We're still kind of in that early phase of the season where you kind of are still warming up a little bit. But now, kind of around that Christmas time where we kind of head into the full swing of basketball. And I think we're going to see – this is the most one of the most important times of the year besides March, obviously. But just to see where our team is really at. Obviously, heading 7-2, and two, you can't really ask for much of a better start. And – I think when you look at the team, I think we look pretty good, well-rounded. We have new freshmen coming in who are making impacts, like Mason Jones, who's been great. And mm -hmm. Bashir Jihad, obviously, been amazing. So I think we have a lot to look forward to entering this kind of middle part of the season. And I think it was, a, like Grant said, you know, fought through adversity, good win, but uh, definitely wanted to beat Detroit Mercy more than three. Mm -hmm. 27 points in the first uh, half, am I correct? Yeah, yep. yep. And they scored 27 points off turnovers alone, so I think that was a big part yeah. of that. They're brutal there. But even with those little games, the little games are always important. The team with these little games has had a record of 72 so far, and that doesn't and that doesn't come with players not putting in work. Tell me who has impressed you the most so far. The player that's impressed me the most is probably uh, J. Elena Anderson. He's been really good this year. I mean, he, he really shoot, can shoot the ball really well. I mean, he's really been a really good piece for Ball State. I mean, I know he's not the best player on the team, but he sure has had a good season so far this year. I think we've got to hear your comparison. Who's your, uh, who's your comparison? I co my comparison? <laughs> he's kind of like, kinda like, reminds me of like a, like a Kyle Korver kind of a guy. Oh. He's like a, he's a shooter. He's a shooter. <laughs> Kyle Korver, I like it. I like it. All right. Uh, I think, obviously, you got to look at Bashir Jahad, obviously, averaging 16 points and six rebounds. Arguably the best player. Most likely you would say he's the best player on this team. Watching him, obviously his post work is great. He can shoot a little bit. Obviously hasn't been the most consistent from the three, but I mean a big guy that can shoot helps space the floor out, helps kind of put more pressure pressure on the defense. But I think also you can't just look at that. You got to look at like the depth too. Uh, Mason Jones, a freshman, he's averaging five points and three rebounds. That's not a lot, mm -hmm. but when you watch the game, it's more of like he's making the more impact on the defense and kind of just disrupting shots and helping the offense get into the motion. And so I think he's been a great impact that you can't overlook as well, obviously. He's an in-transition kind of player. Yeah, exactly. Starts the transition. Mm-hmm. And he's a big part of this team. I think he's helped a lot. And he can kind of get overlooked with, obviously, the Jalen Anderson, the Bashir Jahad, obviously, the Mickey Pearson Jr. He kind of sits low, but I think you can't overlook him. And I think he's been very impressive this the season. You know, a player that's been really impressive for me so far for Ball State, I'm going to give a shout-out to Davion Bailey. I mean, defensively, he's one of the best defensive players that Ball State has. I mean, he gets a lot of steals. 
he's like a, like that kind of like that three and D wing player that we that Ball State has that comes off the bench. He does the little things. He can he can rebound. He can get steals. He's been very impressive so far this year for Ball State. Yeah, and I think my last player, my last player I would like to mention is Mickey Pearson Jr. shooting 47 percent from the three, which 11, he's shooting 11 of 23. So I mean, haven't shot a whole bunch, but he's still hitting 47 percent. So that's pretty impressive. In Ball State, not the greatest of shooting teams, so that obviously helps a lot. And I think he's been great. Obviously, averaging 12 points a game is a big help to any team. So I think he's been good to watch as well. I'd like to mention that Bashir has had the most points on all the uh, for Ball State in every game except for three this year. Yeah, he's had so a career high against Detroit. Obviously, going back to his hometown because he's from Detroit. He said his whole family was there, so obviously he wanted to impress them. That was a revenge game right there. You got to play well up against your hometown yep. team that's coming into Ball State. You got to play lights out. You think he should have dropped more than 26? Hey, that's good. That's good. I mean, he he, he showed what he could. He's a, he was balling. For a forward? Balling. For yeah. a forward? That's good. 26. 26. And he got 10 rebounds, too. He had a double-double. Double-double. Can't go wrong oh, with yeah. that. Their next matchup is Sunday at 2 p.m. at home against SIU Edwardsville. This should really be an easy victory. And us being ahead in the MAC before conference play is really big, too. I think you look at this team, like you said, it should be easy, but it could be one of those things that could get you off guard. They're 0-4 away, so obviously it's at Worthen, so we have that advantage. They haven't won a game on the road, so I think that's a big part where we could come out on top. But like we just mentioned, we just played Detroit Mercy 1-3. by three. They, beat, they beat Detroit Mercy 81-67. to 67. So I'm not saying that can really – dictate anything but they're a good team they can play ball and you kind of got to watch out for them you have to they're one of their best players Shamar Wright he's averaging 16 points a game he had five threes in one game so I think you gotta just gotta be, watch out for those players especially when you're playing a good school D1 like Ball State they could try to impress some people and show out so you gotta be ready Ball State has to out, uh, get rebounds. They got to play really well defensively. I mean, the player that I, that really stands out to me, the second best player, is Rashawn Taylor. I mean, that guy can ball. He's averaging 13 points a game. I mean, you. Did, I mean, they they got some studs on that team. So I think Ball State really needs to come into this game saying, "I have to play well defensively for us to win this game." Because I mean, we can't. You can't be overconfident. Because mm -hmm. when you're overconfident, you saw what happened with Detroit, Mercer or what Detroit. I mean, they almost lost that game. So, I mean, mm -hmm. I, I expect Ball State to kill this team, but at the same time, I <laughs> wouldn't be surprised if something happens where they, it's a close game. What's, you, what's, what's your prediction on the game? Uh, well, I, I expect us to kill them. Maybe, like eight, maybe we'll score like 80 points. They're but, averaging 70 a game. Uh, 70. Ooh, I think we could go <laughs> a little bit over. I think we go over for this team. I think we go over 80. I'm saying Detroit is averaging 70. So, yeah, they're a high-scoring team. Obviously, we're great defense. Mm -hmm. They're also averaging almost five blocks a game as a team. So, I mean. Great defensive team, could score a lot of points. Got to watch out. So, And with the defense, you're, Grant, you're saying very heavily on defense this next game. Just don't get in the foul trouble. That could be a very big mm -hmm. issue. I agree. I agree. But as of right now, it doesn't really look like we're in that much foul trouble as of right now. We're a pretty disciplined team as of right now. Yeah. Off the swim and dive now, this team has had a very small handful of meets, but they won't have another, un another one until January which gives us some time to preview both the men's and the women's season. We will start with the women's because ladies first, obviously. What events or athletes should we watch out for this season? Starting off 3-0 is obviously a great start to their season. Obviously, we got a big break here. We don't start back till I think around January 20th against Toledo. Mm -hmm. um, but I think you got to look at this team. You got Peyton Kelly, uh, you got Laura Wright, both great swimmers. And we have a really well-rounded team starting off 3-0. I mean, that's a big momentum. Hopefully, you just got to kind of maintain that looking into the second half or not even the second half, just to pick up where you left off kind of thing. And obviously, the last invite we had, the Minnesota Invitational, was arguably one of the biggest ones of the year where you have a lot of the top teams in the country there. I think we played we played uh, three teams ranked in the top 25 there. Mm -hmm. So, or competed against three teams there. So, I think that kind of helps dictate where we're at a little bit. So. I think it'll be good to watch. Uh, Ball State's women, uh, for women's, I feel like they just need to like rest up, you know, practice swimming, get do work on the techniques, so that way you'll come back b better and stronger for uh, January. Um, to add to that, I mean, uh, Hayden Kelly's been unbelievable. I mean, she's really had a great season, and uh, she actually Kelly took like eight of uh, like she she took like had like a hundred freestyles in that game and had like a time of like forty nine point six one. 
So, I mean, she that was... She finished eighth in the 100 freestyle. So, yeah, that was pretty fast. Mm -hmm. That was pretty fast for Ball State. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then you got... Uh, she also finished fifth in the 50 freestyle with a time of 22 seconds and 0.42. So, I mean, she's been great in multiple events. And then you look at Laura Wright Sr., she got eighth in the 100 breaststroke. So, I mean, you got a couple different people here who can contribute a lot to this team. I think it's going to be good to watch, obviously, those two leaders of the team. And it'll be a fun test to see how they can bounce or can keep the momentum going into the full part of the season here. Oh, yeah. Off to the men's side, same question. Who should we be watching out for? I think you got to watch out for Jory Barrick. He uh, got top honors in the 100 breaststroke. So, I think that's very impressive against – you got you had he was competing against number four Cal, uh, number eighteen Arizona, and number twenty one Pittsburgh. So he's facing a golf, facing off against great opponents. So okay. to see to finish where he did is pretty impressive. And he had we had five male swimmers compete in that event against those teams. So I think that's a it's a great thing they can use and kind of go off of to keep going into the season. So I think he's the main person you got to watch out for who can really lead this team. Oh yeah, without a doubt. I mean, you know, you got to look at him, uh, Joey uh, Garberg, and he's been he's been unbelievable. I mean, he's been breaking records left and right. He's just he's had an unbelievable year. I mean, hopefully the men's team they'll you know, like you said, like I said earlier, get in shape. You know, keep keep being in shape. Don't you know, don't slack off. Don't you know, work on the work. Yeah. You know, you know, work on the techniques, and they should be fine. I think they'll have a very successful season. You know, I've done swimming before in my life, so I know how the preparation is for swimming, and it's not easy. It's not easy. Yeah, you were a swimmer? Oh, yeah, back in the day when I was younger, I used to be a swimmer. What event? Um, I actually didn't, I actually swam just like I did junior lifeguard mm. when I was younger. Mm. So I had to be in like in tip top shape. So I understand what those swimmers have to go through. Yeah, that's Got good. It. So. That makes sense. Off to our brand new segment. Now, most of you should know what this is. It's start bench cut. But if you don't, I'll explain. I'm going to give three things, and my analyst and I will choose which one we should we would like to start, which one we would like to bench, and which one we would like to cut. First, we'll hit basketball. I will give you three Ball State men's players. You tell me which ones to start, bench, and cut. All right, you ready? The players are Bashir Jahan, Mickey Pearson Jr., and Mason Jones. Start, bench, cut. Where are you going? Grant, we'll start with I'm you. Gonna st I'm going to start Jah Jahid. I'm going to start him. I'm going to start him. He's been really good. I feel like he could really – he's been lights out for this for Ball State. He's been one of our best players. He's had a breakout year, so I'm starting him. I like it. I mean, you can't go wrong. I, I'm going to start Bashir also. But I'm going to go with Mason Jones off the bench because I'm really wow. big on him. Mickey Pearson, he's been great. Don't get me wrong. Let the, let, let the young guy play. Let the young guy let play. Let the young guy play. Get him some minutes, too. You need to give him some minutes. Yeah, I, I just like his game a lot. He's come and impacted this team a lot. Obviously, he doesn't show up in the box score like I mentioned earlier, but he's just a great, well-rounded player. He can do a little bit of everything. And Mickey Pearson Jr., obviously, I would like not to cut him, shooting 47% from three, great shooter, mm -hmm. get to the basket, but I just like Mason Jones' game a lot. Yeah. Grant, bench and cut? Mm, bench and cut. Uh, I think I'll probably cut, uh, hmm, I'd probably go, who was that other player that you said? Uh, Mason, Mason Jones. Mason Jones, I, 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 probably would, I probably would cut him just because, I, I, know, I know he's been good. I yeah. know he's got potential, but like I say at the same time, if you got to cut somebody, you got to cut him because, I mean, He's not getting any playing time, so we really don't know what he can do. I'm wishing well for the kid. I hope he has a great season. I, I really do. Yeah, yeah. He's a good kid. Good what about kid. you, AJ? I feel like, the as I said it in that order, I think that's the order I'd go. Bashir at the start, and then I'd put uh, Pearson at the bench, and then yeah, cut up. Can't argue with it. Can't Mason. Next one, swim and dive. We're going to do events with swim and dive. So which events would you prefer doing or watch? Uh, individual swing event, a relay event, or a diving event. I mean, you're. I'll let you take I'll, it away. I'll do a relay really event. Got, a relay event. Experience. You know, it's really competitive. You're trying to really show off your skills, and it's like you know, you want to have a fast pace as well when you're swimming against different people. So I mean, I I, I would go with that one. I'd go with that one. Uh, I think. I think I have to go with the diving one, to be honest. Honestly, I'm the same way. It, it's cool. You get to do the flips and the yeah, tricks and yeah. all of that. I, There's you, some you risk in there. You will not catch me doing it, but I would love to watch other people do it. I'm not going to jump. Hey, if you guys ever dive, you guys need to be safe doing it. Oh, yeah. You, you, you do it before? Uh, I'm not very good at diving. I can't, <laughs> I can't pull off the diving. <laughs> okay. I'm not a so big. So you're more like a relay event? Yeah, like relay event. Guy. I'm not a big water guy either, but if I had the talent to do it, diving would sound really fun to me. Uh, bench. Which one? Mm, bench. Mm. You said relay event, Grant. Yeah, relay event. So relay individual event. or diving? I'd probably, I'd probably, 
probably diving, diving, diving. Diving for bench know, and yeah. cut the individual? Yeah, di yeah, I would. Because diving is just hard for me. I've never been a diver. I, I, I couldn't get the technique down to save my life. It was, <laughs> it was horrible. Uh, I, I need to see some film from that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm gonna have to, I'll cut the individual one too. I just, from a perspective of watching it, I think watching the relay would be cooler. And I like watching, I like watching Ball State relay too. Very good team, so. I in my, in my opinion, I'm going to cut the relay and bench the individual. My reason being is that the individual, you get to show your talent against some of the best of the best. And if something happens, you only have yourself to blame. You don't have anyone else like, oh, they, they were because they were too slow or this mm -hmm. happened. No, you only have yourself to blame. So it's either you or you're gone. Now, because it's very close to Christmas and I'm at least looking festive, um, we're going to do a start bench cut with some Christmas movies. Ooh. Some three, three classics. Home Alone, the original. Let me clarify the first one. Not the third. Not the third, fourth, or fifth. They, in Hot Take, they should have st stuck with just two. First and second one. That's all they should have had. So Home Alone, the Santa Claus, and Elf. Start bench cut. Start bench cut. I'm going to have to cut the Santa Claus movie. Oof. That's a good one. That's a good one. I would agree with you. I cut the Santa Claus movie, too. Mm -hmm. Wow. But for me, I think I have to start Elf. Mm. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to start uh, Home Alone. Home Ooh. Alone's a classic movie. If the kid left Home Alone, the robbers are trying to get in, and plus they got the robbers g getting pranked and almost getting killed in the movie. It's <laughs> that's funny. a classic. Let's see, me, probably start Home Alone because love Chicago. That's awesome. Not hometown. from Chicago, but my parents were close to that's Chicago. Hometown. I love that city. Bench. Honestly, I can make a lot more jokes with the Santa Claus than I can with Elf. I feel like I can enjoy watching the Santa Claus a little bit more than Elf because you watch Elf every single year. Mm -hmm. But the Santa Claus, you watch it, it's like, oh, I, I missed that Elf that was in like this area of the movie where the elves are just like around in like uh, around the town. And it's like, mm -hmm. ooh, I missed that one. That's really fun for me to like do. So I like watching that. So Santa Claus, I would bench. It's a really good movie, and I enjoy, I can make jokes about watching it because I'm a guy that likes making jokes while watching movies, and I'll cut Elf. Dang. The Elf? That's, that's just a difficult situation, though. <laughs> it, I mean, it's all three a difficult situation. That's why I put all yeah, three of those movies. True. They're that's all true. three classics. But honestly, you can't go real wrong with start benching or cutting any three of those. Everyone's got their own opinion, but you can't go wrong. Oh, I, I like Home Alone better, but Elf is a sure is a great movie. I love Elf. You can't you can't go wrong with any three of those. Nah, movies. you can't. You I'm really can't. Mm -mm. The only one that you can go wrong with is three, four, the rest of those Home Alones that aren't one, two, and the third Santa yeah, Claus, because that really didn't ball. make any sense. Hey, the second one's fine, though. Hey, the, the Home Alone 3, the recent Home Alone that came out was a horrible movie. I wouldn't recommend watching that movie. Please, <laughs> Disney Plus subscribers out there, do not watch that movie. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Wow. All right. All right. Some very interesting points. Mm -hmm. And that's it for the semester. And I'd like to take a second to thank all the people who are able to make CSL Plus happen, from the producers to the crew, and to you guys for Definitely. coming along the ride with me. Sure. And for you, the viewer, I thank you for watching, as it's very entertaining. You get to see us make some funny takes and also get to talk about some sports. Well, we'll see you in the new year. For With Grant Godwin and Carter Brimer, I'm AJ Nyard saying Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year.